Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevails. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Praise the Lord. How many are glad you're in church today? Amen. Ready to receive the word of God? Amen. Let's go for it. Father God, we thank you so much for this awesome power that you've given to us, the power of seed faith. This is our number four in a series, and we say thank you so much for giving this awesome thing to us by revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the word of God. And all the people of God said? Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. We're on our power of seed faith number four, and let's get started. So now that we've planted our seeds to God, we've ordered our harvest in advance, but we still have some work to do. How I many know we have a little bit of believing, speaking, taking? Amen? Okay. A farmer harvest begins with a seed he planted several months ago, but his work doesn't stop when he gets the seed in the ground. What has he got to do? He has to cultivate it. He has to work over it, water it, dig around it, and give it all around attention to make produce so, so he can go out and gather in a harvest that he's expecting. Amen? Amen? So we have some things to do about the seeds we planted. Amen? All right. So once you planted your seed and ordered your miracle harvest, then it's time to cultivate it. Turn your attention to soil tending. Mm -hmm. Here's how you do it. Okay? Cultivate your relationship with Jesus. Looking to Him as your source. Putting Him first in everything you do. Confessing His word that your needs are met. And living in a state of expectancy. Expect a miracle. Oral Roberts used to say that. And I used to say what he said. And the miracle has come. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. So expect a new miracle every day. Everybody look at me and say, I'm doing that, Pastor. I'm doing it, expecting it every day. Mm -hmm. Every day is what you're expecting, a miracle. Amen? So your tithing not, is not a debt that you owe, but it's a seed that you sow. Amen. Okay? In the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, so there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Isn't that amazing? Okay. So many give out of a sense of duty as if they owe God something. A lot of people think that's what the tithe is. As a result, they never expect a miracle. Jesus is the only one who can pay the debt we owe for sins, and Jesus paid it all. He changed our giving from debt we owe to a seed of love that we sow. Thank you, Jesus. A half-hearted expectancy will never lead to total victory. Notice what it says here in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 15 through 20. And Elisha said unto him, Take a bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. Okay? And he, and he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Ephek till thou hast consumed them. And he said, take the arrows, and he took them. All right, and then he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground, and he smote three times and stopped. Okay? And the man of God was angry and wroth with him and said, Thou should have smitten five or six times. 
Then haddest thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but three times. Okay? And Elisha died, and he buried him, and the bands of Moabites invaded, and the land was coming in that year. So, what's interesting to me in the scripture is, the man of God stood behind the king, put his hands on the bow with the king, and said, shoot, there's your deliverance. Then he said, strike the ground, and the king did it, one, two, three. But the man of God said to him, you should have did it more often. That way we can have total victory. What is he trying to tell us? That's what we need to observe in here. Okay? Here we see the king Josiah of Israel asked the prophet Elijah what he should do. Elisha gave the king instructions to be obeyed. And he told him to strike the ground with the arrows, representing the number of victories he would have had over the Syrian army. However, the king only struck the ground three times. His half-hearted expectancy caused him to receive only a partial victory. So, are we expecting a real miracle when we give a seed faith, or are we just kind of whole humming it? Cannot be half-hearted. You've got to be all the way expecting to receive. Amen? We have the blessing of the Father in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 14, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. We've got to start expecting this to happen to us consistently. Oh, yeah, this is great. No, God's going to bless me. And he's going to multiply that which I've asked for. God doesn't just give you a little bit. He just doubles it up and pours it all over the place. That's an expectant end. Say, thank you, Lord. And God's promise is that he wants to meet our needs by the promise of his blessing. God also reveals that promise and operates according to our giving and receiving. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 14 to 19, Notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. In other words, you gave some money in this situation, okay? And then he goes on, he says, Now you Philippians, or you people watching by video or internet here in the ministry, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated or gave me with concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Okay, he departed. Macedonia. Do you realize you've got to get on a boat and get back to the mainland? What's that cost? I want to go to Korea. What church is communicating with me to help the Koreans? How are you getting the point when I'm trying to get across? That's what Paul is saying. Okay? Then he goes on. For even in Thessalonica you sent once and again. You did it more than two times, not just three times. You did it a bunch of times unto my necessity. Not because I desired the gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Amen. All right. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epiditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell sacrifice, except the well-pleasing to God. Come on. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God will supply your need because you're communicating with your seed giftings. You are helping out. You're being a blessing to other people. When you do that, God's going to do it. Okay? God wants to bless you according to his promises. Amen? His blessings. So our giving becomes fruit that abounds to our account. The seed smells sweet to God. It's a sweet-smelling sacrifice. The seed is out of a sacrifice, our need and deep want. The seed is acceptable to God's sight. The seed is well-pleasing to God. And He will supply all our needs according to His riches, according to His abundance. Amen? So we've got to start thinking a little bit differently. Because a lot of us just wants it in it for me. God doesn't want it just in it for you. He wants it in it for you, of course, but he wants you to bless others. It's a neat thing to give money to somebody who has a desire and a need, but they're also helping out in the gospel. Say amen. amen. The blessing of the Father. It is his total blessing for every area of our lives. Amen. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 2, it says, And these blessings, God has a storehouse of blessings, shall come on you, and overtake you if you will listen to the voice of the Lord your God. 
That's what he's telling you today. How many want the blessing? Yes. Excuse me. To overcome you. To overtake you. Like a tidal wave. Amen. So when you're down at the beach, you see the waves coming in. And if you're sitting on the water's edge, the waves overtake you. And you've got to look at every wave that come in as God's blessing overtaking you constantly. It never stops. Thank you, Jesus. And sometimes it's a huge wave or a bigger blessing. Sometimes it's a smaller one. But you're getting a consistent flow of God's blessings. So what we have to do is listen to the Lord and what He's saying and then doing what He tells us to do. Now, Pastor Robert has this problem. When God says something to do, okay, I'm doing it. Other people go, was that God? Can you give me another indication that it was you, Lord? I'm not sure if you're talking to me. I'm, uh, what is that? That's called hesitation, which will bring in doubt, which will cause reason to come in and you miss the whole thing. How come God never blesses me? Well, he did, but you wouldn't do anything. Say amen. 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 i got to tell you this. How many know how to play baseball? It is America's favorite pastime. All right? You have made a hit, and you're on first base. All right? This is the first base. Do I just stay here, or do I lead off? Okay? But assuming if the ball's in a pitcher's hand, he could turn around and throw it first base and put you out, right? Steal second! Go for it! Run! And you'll safely make it. You cannot get to home if you're still stuck on first. You cannot get to God's blessings if you're still stuck there waiting. You've got to say, uh, okay, I'm planting a seed. I'm leading off, Lord. I'm planting a seed. I'm leading off. I'm waiting. Okay, okay. Here comes the blessing. I'm running. Yeah. The guy dropped the ball. I'm on the third. I'm coming home. I'm sliding in safe. But see, we could be sitting safely on first and not do that, waiting for a guy to make a home run before you run. We can't think like that if you're expecting blessings to come on us. Right. Now, in Deuteronomy 28.8, the scripture says, The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouses and in all that you'll set us thine hand on to do. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. It is God's blessing to us. Amen. So it's his total blessing for every area of our life. There are conditions to receiving the blessings, and they are, listen to what he says, do what he says. Now, he commands the blessing on our storehouses. Notice, God does not command the blessing upon his storehouse. He said, our storehouses. Did you also notice God said storehouses? Okay, not one, but several. So what is your storehouse? Is it, excuse me, is it? Your bank account? Is it, what is it, your storehouse? What is it that God can use, amen, as a storehouse? Several storehouses, amen. amen. Here are some good ways to build our storehouses. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that you there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now here what said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open your windows and pour you out a blessing, that there not be enough room to receive it all. Okay? And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. That's powerful words. So bring all the tithes into God's storehouse. When we give to God first, we are building storehouses. Now let me give you something to understand. You're taking your money that you've made at work, and that's your seed, and you're transferring it out of your hands into the kingdom of God's hands. You're not giving it to Pastor Robert. You're not bringing it here to give to the church. You are giving it to the Lord. Now, you brought it into a storehouse. It's up to the pastor and God what he does with the money. So, but far as your part is, you release it to God. Amen. Because a lot of people, oh, yeah, you just give it to the pastor and he's just going to mis misappropriate the money and he's going to spend it. Why are you talking negative about a man of God who God placed in that position? You better be careful. Just think about that you're giving it to the Lord. Say amen. amen. 
So when we give to God first, we're a building storehouses. Then God has an opportunity to multiply it back into our storehouse the way we need it most. God said, give, and it will be given back to you. Okay? Luke 6, 38. Give, and else shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. This is powerful. Whatever we sow, that's what will be multiplied back to us with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Multiplied back to us. God's word is designed to work in our behalf. But we must first get into obedience with God's word. Then what we give will be blessed, multiplied, and returned to us in the form of miracle harvests. Amen. So the way you give to God determines the way you receive from him. In 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. This I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully will reap also bountifully. Okay, I gotta, I gotta say this by the Spirit of God in me in Jesus' name. He which soweth sparingly. Maybe all you can afford is a buck. Maybe all you can do is a $5 bill. And $10 to you might be a lot. Get to the point where you can give $5 consistency and asking the Holy Spirit, when do I get to move this up? He will help you. The day will come when you can give $100 like you gave a dollar. There will be a time in your life when you give $500 like you gave a $5 bill. There will be times in your life you give $1,000 like it was $10. Mm -hmm. After a while, it's going to be higher because God's going to bless you back more than what you give. Okay? But get out of the thing of saying, all I can, all I can afford. That is not God talking to you. That's you talking to you. You've got to come to say, Holy Spirit, you know how much money I have because all my money is your money. How much money do you want me to give so that you can multiply back to me? I'm expecting a miracle. We don't do that like we could and like we should. But if you start doing that, eventually your $5 bill will turn to a $100 bill, $500 bill. You've got to start realizing God wants to bless you more than you think because we think, Oh, I have to buy lunch, I have to buy gas, so I can't give $100, I can only give two bucks. I moved up from a dollar. But you didn't ask the Lord, so we've got to come together with Him. Say, thank you, Lord. So the way you give to God determines the way you receive. It's in direct proportion. One affects the other. If you're able to give substantially to God, but you give to him with only a tiny little measure percentage-wise, you will receive only a trickle of blessings back from him. You're the one that determines the measure. And if you go out broke, that's your fault, not God's. You've got to start determining. It's his money. He gave it to you because he provided the seed to the sower. So if you want a bigger increase, Start asking the Holy Spirit to help you. Holy Spirit, you know I've been stingy with my money. You know I've been really tight with it. But I need to loosen up and listen to you. Help me to do it right. He will help you. That's what he's here for. He'll comfort you. And he'll show you how quick you can get a return in it. God's reward system. Amen. And in Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith. Everybody says, God gave you a measure of faith. Are you using it? God said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, Holy Spirit, how much money can I give so God can reward me openly? Isn't that expecting a miracle? And that God wants you to be a millionaire. How long do you have to be before you become a millionaire? How old do you have to be in God's house? Look at I said this a million times. How old do you have to be before you get healed in God's hospital? Mm -hmm. How old do you have to be? In other words, are you using your faith that he gave you when you were born again 25 years ago? And you're still not there? 
God's trying to figure this out and help you to get over that hurdle, so to speak. Amen. All right. So many times we only think that our only reward is in heaven. But that's not true. God has a hundredfold return for us right here on earth. He said that in Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say to you. Now, Jesus is speaking. He's talking to me. I don't know about you guys. There is no man that has left a house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold when? Now in this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, and mother, children, and hands with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. So I'm expecting a hundredfold because he said so. Since God wants to give us the hundredfold return, let us stop Satan from stealing from us. Amen? Amen. Make the declaration out loud with me. Come on. Satan, Satan. you loose my hundredfold blessing. You loose my hundredfold Lord, Lord, I thank you. That as I sow my seed, my harvest of blessing is being released right now. And by faith, I will not let it pass me by, but I will receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So what about this persecution thing? The very fact that we're experiencing persecution could be an indication that the hundredfold is either here or it's on its way. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, the persecution is, is, is an interesting thing. It's not that they're going to arrest you and throw you in jail. It's just that they'll ignore you. They won't be your friends. That's persecution. It's just, oh, you believe in Jesus, they give you a line of stuff. You go, ha, I've been ready for my hundredfold. Come on, Jesus. Amen. So Jesus told Peter about the hundredfold return. He was telling all believers that for everything we've given up for the gospel's sake, if we will look at as if a seed planted before God, we can receive a hundredfold return. A hundredfold of blessings of God that we can take into our beings and through which we can be made a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. So when you're in God's reward system, the hundredfold return will be flowing in your life. So I'm saying, okay, God gives me my $10,000 and I'm thinking, will I give $1,000 back? I'd be stupid if I don't. Right? But that's 10%. What about giving more? Oh, I better talk to the Holy Spirit. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Because I don't want to miss out on another hundredfold because there could be another 10,000 ready to drop into my lap from the first 10,000. Are you all following me? Okay. So God wants to pour out blessings that you cannot contain. Wow. I said to the Lord, I want $10,000 every day. Every day. What a special miracle. Every day. I could be helping somebody. And of course, all my bills are paid. So I have plenty of money now. I could go preach. I could go teach. I could stand on a street corner. I could do a lot of things and not worry about the money and turn around and sow it into people's lives and help them say amen. amen. So I want to have blessings that I cannot contain. He told me that in Malachi 3, verse 10 and 11. I read it to you. God does not pour money out of heaven. How many of you know that? Okay? Money doesn't pour out of heaven. Houses don't fall out of heaven. Cars don't fall out from heaven. Jobs don't fall out from heaven. The blessing of God comes through ideas, concepts, insights, which come from heaven. Okay? God pours out this type of blessing that you cannot contain them all. And these blessings work. So in other words, when God says do something and you don't do it, you miss out on that blessing. Like the lady I said in the book of Kings, had she not built the little house apartment for the man of God to walk by, she would not have had a baby. So it all is working for good. Amen. So I'm almost done. So why not put your faith to work 
and see what God can do. Begin to take God at His word. He said it, that's it. Begin right now to confess with your mouth. Here we go. Say with me. My giving is causing the windows of heaven to open. My giving is causing the windows of heaven to open. And God is pouring out ideas. And God is pouring out ideas. Concepts and insights. Concepts and insights. Into my mind. Greater than I can obtain, uh, contain. Greater than I can obtain. He is in charge, he is in charge of, bringing in of bringing in the miracles that can happen in my life. In my life. And, these I will receive. and these I will receive. Amen and amen. amen. Now remember, God is your source. And men are the instruments that he uses. Amen? amen and amen and amen and we're going to pray thank you Lord let's pray right now I believe the Holy Spirit has given us great insights for these last four teachings on the power of seed faith and we take these things and we apply them God will bless you more abundantly than you think or ask and what's amazing to me is that he gives you ideas on how fast can you operate on them because what I've noticed is the opportunity comes and you don't act on it like right now. It will disappear and you'll go like, now I had a dream in the middle of the night. And then what was it? It's gone. Because you didn't take the time to write down the thought or the idea what came to you. All right. So in the middle of the day when God's talking to you and you're hearing it. And he spoke to me the other day. You got to write it down. You have iPads and iPhones and all kinds of ways to record that what he says to you so you can't forget it. Or you write it down right away because you go, oh yeah, that's great. And you move on. You're missing out. Say thank you, Lord. So I got to tell you this story and then we'll pray. Thank you, Lord. In this book I was reading, it was a farmer who had a farm that was not doing well. And the farmer was out really concerned about, what am I going to do? And he was a man of God, but he's standing on this farm. He's got some acreage, but it isn't producing like he expected it. So he's kind of like forlorn, and he's praying. That's the best part. He's praying. And the Holy Spirit rose up inside him and said, right exactly where you're standing, drill for oil. That ain't a vegetable farmer's idea. So he went and did what the Holy Spirit told him to do and produce 600 barrels of oil each day, which provided him close to $30,000 a day. How I many you know that's a, that's a lot of money? So then he went out and said, okay, Lord, can I have more? And he said, yeah, the next thing you know, he had 10 or 12 more oil wells on his property that produced 10 to 12 more times than he had. So talk about a wild idea, insight, and concept from the Lord. Instead of planting vegetables, he got oil. How I many know that there's things that you don't think is normal? It doesn't sound right. But the Holy Spirit has the answer. So take time to listen to what he has to say. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the power of seed faith, giving us insights and understanding about how it operates. We ask you to help us to understand it and to operate it, to be a blessing to others as well as bless us. Thank you for overtaking us with your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much to do that. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we say thank you. And all the people of God said amen and amen. amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video, and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you. You pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. Or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. 
We want to teach you to become God's minister, healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503-652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.